this is one of the most requested items from my subscribers on my youtube channel you guys want to know what my network rack look like my home lab look like so this is the network or server rack that i have in the basement of my house and it is composed of few servers that are second hand used servers that either i bought or i got it for free through my connections so in terms of this rack itself uh, i got the this rack for free uh, from someone uh, who just put it on the kijiji for free uh, but this is not actually a server rack this is a telecom rack uh, telecom racks are slightly different from server rack that in a way that the screw holes if you look at them is uh, drilled in to the uh, post as opposed to the server rack with uh, this uh, specific uh, you know the screw uh, like a lock thing that you put it behind it i just can't remember what they call uh, so this is you can see it's a telecom rack but i i repurpose it uh, for a server rack i got it for 100 percent free uh, in terms of my equipment uh, let's start from the top uh, you have the um, we have this um, switch uh, that which i purchased uh, that distribute uh, network connection uh, throughout the house i also have a second switch that is an older switch that i have been using for a while right behind it and you can see that switch is a d-link switch uh, with a bunch of uh, connections uh, that is distributing network connections across my house so in this rack i have two switches at the top uh, one is at the front right here and the other one is on the back uh, which is distributing bunch of um, you know connection across the house again <laughs> i probably haven't mentioned this before uh, it cable management is not the world best uh, but it is what it is and uh, you know that's how my uh, network distribution is done at the top uh, and on the next uh, section right here uh, we have uh, my internet connections uh, that's coming up from my router or the modem uh, provided by my uh, service provider right here it is connected to a backup um, router uh, it's a wireless uh, uh, wi-fi uh, you know backup router the reason i call it a backup router is because i have uh, two wi-fi networks in my house uh, providing uh, redundancy in case my main uh, wi-fi network goes down so this is my backup wi-fi network uh, with the router on it uh, it's basically a consumer grade router from linksys i don't remember the model wrt something and that's what it is uh, right next to it i have my home automation uh, module which is basically a vera light or vera light uh, I don't want to purchase anything new because it works fine. It, it does all the things I need to do, uh, which is connecting all my uh, sensors across the house, including uh, door sensors, window break sensors, uh, garage door sensors, etc., etc. Uh, right below it, uh, you can see two power distribution points. Uh, these are these two uh, distribution uh, points, and those distribution bars uh, on the back of it you have all the power connections uh, such as right here we have the power going into the servers uh, and other equipment and same with the other distrib power distribution point you can see the plugs coming out and those power actually goes all the way and then connect to different devices that i have on the rack and this is the back side of my servers so you can see uh, it has uh, the network uh, jacks and the power uh, connected right underneath it i have my um, i have my uh, monitor uh, as you can see right here uh, that's the monitor uh, it is uh, ele uh, connected to a uh, electronic uh, kvm switch so i can click a button and switch between my different servers I have. So I can click the button again and it will switch the server on them. And that switch is uh, right here. I also have an additional extra um, switch right here. 
because I don't have enough uh, ports available on my switch up there and the switch up here so I have an additional switch uh, added right behind here it's a dealing cheap uh, consumer grade switch I also don't have PoE power over Ethernet on any of my switches so I have uh, PoE injectors right here uh, they are powering um, there's a bunch of injectors in the back right there as well uh, they are powering my um, access points uh, as well as my uh, um, uh, my security cameras and if you come to the front at the very top I have my um, Dell server uh, this is a Dell T uh, 320 uh, I got it for free because one of my family member uh, company that they were working was shutting down and I asked the owner and they said yeah I can have the server for free so this is a free server it's the newest most powerful server I have on this rack and it has four hard drives right now uh, I can populate uh, four more hard drives there uh, so it is a Dell uh, T um, uh, 320 uh, so that's the model uh, of that server uh, that server is running a bunch of virtual machines that I'm testing and playing with and it allow me to do a lot of videos for you guys and etc etc so that virtual this is basically have a bunch of virtual machines that I'm playing with just underneath it I have the HP uh, two servers these are all servers I purchased for less than 100 bucks each I think just 100 bucks each uh, and these are, uh, if you look at right here, it's the G7 uh, Dell, uh, sorry, uh, HP uh, DL380s. Uh, um, the top one is populated with all the hard drives in here and they're in RAID configurations. However, uh, I'm only using two of those hard drives in RAID 1. Other hard drives are just uh, sitting there, not doing anything. I even have spaces uh, because I don't need them. And this particular machine is running uh, a bunch of virtual machines uh, that includes uh, PFSense firewall uh, and bunch of other uh, virtual machines that allow me uh, to create uh, certain features within our home network, such as access control, uh, like LDAP, uh, you know, uh, configurations. Uh, Active Directory domain controller is also installed on one of the servers. It's actually in the other server right below it. Uh, so that's what I have this server set up for. So this is mostly PFSense firewall for the house. And this firewall uh, is basically directly connected to my internet connection modem up here, uh, right there. And instead of going through this router, it's going straight from this to uh, this PFSense fi fi firewall and I have also bypass that actually go back up to my uh, router up here in case my firewall goes down so what I mean is that if you look at this rack if my firewall down here if it goes down I don't want the entire house internet to go down like I don't want the whole entire house internet to go down because if this thing goes down so as a result I have two Wi-Fi network this one and I have another uh, Wi-Fi network that is coming out of here majority of the house wired networks all go through this uh, server because it is the pfsense firewall server that is directly connected to the outside providing security for uh, all the family members in the house right below it i have another uh, hp uh, g7 on this particular server i have bunch of virtual machines uh, that are used for my videos and uh, all the things that I'm playing with and some Windows server configurations all go through this server. As you can see, it has all the hard drives populated and they are in RAID configuration again. And that is what actually uh, I have set it up right below it. Right beneath it, I have purchased uh, two QNAP um, NAS servers. And this is a uh, NAS server that is a standalone that is directly connected to my network. This is a storage, uh, basically array, uh, with from Q from QNAP. This one is connected to this server, just above it, and allowing me to configure items so that me and my brother have access to certain folders, but my parents and everybody else have access to other folders. So it has lots of storage. I believe like. 10 or 20 terabytes of storage I don't remember exactly 
uh, and it contain all the files and virtual machines, everything I need to run my uh, configurations and it is uh, access control. So my um, mom or dad or other people coming to this house won't be able to access certain folders in here while they would be able to access other folders. On this QNAP, I have some family pictures and movies and etc. Again, all my family members and friends can access depending on the access that is being controlled by the LDAP uh, configuration server uh, controlled by the, uh, uh, the server just above it. Just underneath it, I have really cheap uh, three UPS uh, devices. These are consumer grade UPS devices. Uh, I purchased uh, from Best Buy. Uh, these are not like industrial grade or anything like that. They are good enough. And these three UPSs are feeding power uh, to remember our two um, power bars uh, way up here. We are on the back of those power bars. Uh, we have the power supply for the servers and all the other equipment and devices. These two power bars are being distributed. Okay, again, cable management is not the world best, but it is what it is. Uh, and this is how I have set up so far. And just underneath it, uh, you probably saw another server sitting there. Uh, that it was my very first HP server I ever got. Again, I got it on Kijiji for like 50 bucks. It's dirt cheap. And uh, I use this for sometimes spare parts when I need some parts for my older servers uh, are up here. So all my servers, as you can see, this one, this one, and this one are old, old servers. This is not even running. It's just using for spare parts. And I know there are a lot of dust here. I should be cleaning those ones too. Um, other than that, um, you know, um, the, in terms of brand new equipment, only thing I have purchased is those uh, UPS devices. This switch I purchased brand new. I purchased the, this uh, secondary uh, modern Wi-Fi device, uh, brand new and some, uh, you know, home automation device and the switch in the back uh, and some NAS devices the, like uh, the one that you saw uh, down here. So other than that, the servers themselves are uh, actually either I got it for free or uh, I, you know, got it for dirt cheap. This entire rack from the top to very bottom, it cost me less than 2000 Canadian dollars. This entire rack from top to bottom cost me less than, uh, you know, 2000 to 3000 Canadian dollars. I don't remember the exact price, but each service less than like 200 to 100 bucks like these two servers are less than 100 bucks this one i got it for free and that one is i believe maybe 150 or something bucks a long time ago so it's really cheaply made uh, put together uh, rack uh, depending on where you live in the world this may not be possible for you to do uh, for this cheap but in canada if you are in canada you can build a server rack like this by just looking out for some sales on kijiji or elsewhere a uh, few more items that I didn't cover, uh, I'm going to quickly cover, is that with this uh, server unit that I got from uh, our you know, family members uh, company, I also got a nice Dell um, tape drive. You can see this green light, that's a Dell tape drive. Uh, you can see back there, right there, that's my tape drive. I haven't got to use it yet. Uh, I have the tape drives and devices uh, right here, the tape uh, drives themselves. So I have those tape drives I could use. So I'm going to play with them sometimes later. I have been busy working and doing other stuff. Uh, so in that's some of the you know things that you get when you know people in the industry. In terms of uh, cabling, yeah, it's a mess. As you can see, all the cables are coming from the ceiling uh, and get being dropped to uh, the servers down here or being put into these switches up here so you can see that's a switch in the back of the rack or put it into the switch at the front right here and the ca uh, the cables right here also i had to purchase brand new those are cables that i put together uh, and then i distribute uh, network connections uh, across my house using uh, those uh, cables so then all these cables uh, that right here and the cables over there they all come down and drop from the ceiling and go into my con configuration right here so when you're building a server rack like this couple of things you need to take into consideration is that 
uh, if you live with family members or your wife or your mom, dad, your brother, you need to always have to build redundancy, redundancy, redundancy. Like at the very top, I have a Wi-Fi router that is providing redundancy to the access points that are connected to my uh, PFSense server down here, uh, PFSense uh, virtual um, machine firewall. Just in case if I mess something up uh, with my uh, firewall down here, I don't want the entire house to uh, lose uh, internet connection. Um, so I have a bunch of access points uh, throughout my house as well. And that's something you need to think about when you're building a, a home lab uh, a server rack, when you're creating something like this, you need to always think about redundancy, redundancy, redundancy. You do not want to have a situation where your family members lose uh, access to internet suddenly for the entire day or couple of days because you mess up a virtual machine uh, that you're playing with. So I always have built two networks in my house. So basically I have two networks running uh, parallel uh, in my house as a result. So that's everything today. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns regarding anything I covered, if you want to know like how to build a uh, you know, rack like this or you want to reach out to me, you're more than welcome to do so. As always, please make sure to subscribe and have a nice day.